Merci Florence. Um, thank you so much for being so kind to host us here in this wonderful city of Paris with our international conference. All of us are present and sitting in many conferences and the danger that conferences which we attend are stealing our time is quite high in times like this. So if this shall be a very successful conference, and I know it will be, please allow me to be very open and direct with you. I will promise I don't talk more than 10 minutes and I will talk in a double role. I will talk to you as president of Insurance Europe and I will talk to you as CEO of a typical mid-sized European insurance company, being active in 18 countries in Europe and serving 17 million customers, retail customers, SME, corporate customers. I just will address three topics in the next 10 minutes. I will talk about customers, item one. I will talk about investments, item two. And third, I will talk at the end about global competitiveness. Let me please start with the topic of customers. For decades, and I even would say for centuries, this industry is living by the trustworthiness which we have towards our customers, by the reputation. We are serving retail customers, SME customers, corporate customers, and what we're providing is very simple. We're providing security and we're providing stability. We're taking care of the belongings of houses, of cars, of factories, production units. We're taking care of the pension, of the life, and of the health. On the other side, there are people or corporates who expect from us that we keep our promises. We expect that that what we tell them, what's written in contracts, will be fulfilled with life. So the only currency in which this industry really is dealing, it's not the euro, it's not the dollar, it's not any kind of local currency in Europe, is about trustworthiness and reliability. Now, as I said, we have various players, if you listen to me, right, on this playing field. We have insurance companies and we have customers. And it's usually, if you might have different interests, you need a kind of referee. And we are very happy that we have with EOPA a very active, very strong referee in Europe. Plus, we have local referees, we have national authorities. The funny thing is just if us insurance companies play abroad, if we play in US, if we play in Asia, we learn suddenly that the referee there is acting in a different way. Also very conservative, also very prudent, but not as conservative as on our home ground. Please don't misunderstand me. What we currently appreciate, if we talk about the retail investment strategy, and I'm sure you know what I will talk about now, it is the retail investment strategy. We love a lot if hand by hand, we help our customers to go into digital times. We love this. We love a lot if we increase financial literacy of European citizens, because Susan Neely, the president of the Global Federation of Insurance Associations, will talk about it later. The gap, the pension gap, and again, in general, the gaps about underinsurance are huge. So we have to increase this financial literacy if you really want to increase European wealth, if you really want to take care that people, when they retire, for instance, have a life in dignity and not in poverty. This is our responsibility. This is our contribution to the civil society of Europe. This is the contribution of Europe insurers towards the wealth of Europe. What we are facing currently with the retail investment strategy is just the opposite. There is a ban of inducement in there in three of four potential areas, and the effect, what we anticipate, is just the opposite of the desire I talked about. We will have less advice, less financial literacy, and an increased pension gap. This is something what we're sure about. I understand that we have now basically a different point of views how we can tackle this topic, but frankly spoken, the industry is very clearly united that this proposal, which we currently face from the Commission, is really a very bad way which we should not follow. Item number two I'm going to talk about is about investments. In my function, both as manager of a mid-sized European insurance company and in my function of president of Insurance Europe, I can tell you I have a lot of talks with my peers. Some of them are joining this conference. Peers, CEO 
of Europe-wide and global-wide relevant insurance companies, not only here in Europe, but also in Asia and also in the US. And you can believe me that none of them, no CEO of a relevant insurance company, if it's a direct insurance company, a primary insurance company, if it is a reinsurance company, is not knowing about our deep responsibility on the fight against climate change. There's no one among us who says that this fight against climate change has not to be top priority. We all take it super serious, not only as top manager, but all of us also are mothers or fathers and know about our resp responsibility as European citizen. But just also the same here, the level of regulation which we experience in order to find proper um, our possibilities to investment, this is increasing. It just killing us, it's taking away the oxygen, it's taking away the breath. We cannot grow, we find no possibility to grow and also here by this we're destroying the wealth of Europe and we're also really hindering the European way going and pushing this global uh, necessary transformation into green energy. We cannot really exploit our full potential there. Why this is a big problem? Because all of you know that our industry, which is united today in this room, is the largest investor in Europe. We have 11 trillion, you know this figure from my last speeches, we have 11 trillion euros of assets under management. And the question in which direction we steer, we drive those investments, this is crucial if this green transformation will work or not. And allow me one comment about regulation to be super clear on this. What we are facing, the big problem, is this matrix. And frankly spoken, I know the traps which matrix can provide in the company. If all of you who also work in corporates know about the danger of matrix organization, because at the end of the day, no one is responsible, or all are responsible. And why I say this is, we have regulations which really appreciate, such as DORA, for instance, which is typical of our industry, right? But then we have horizontal legislation, which comes in, especially if it's about digitization, from various industry. And as we often hear from Michaela Koller, our Director General, it's then not the case that certain types of regulations are disappearing. They're staying, and other ones are put in on top. And this is what I mean when I talk about that we need oxygen to breathe. It just steals the way how we conduct our business. The last topic, item number three I want to talk about, is a super important one. It's about global competitiveness. And to be not misunderstood, I know that your member firms, if you're running association, not all of you of your member firms are acting globally. I know about this, but I can tell you something. Of all those companies who are internationally active on this planet, more than 50% are based in Europe. More than 50% have their home turf in Europe. If I want to go with my company to US, if I want to make business there, I need 20 to 30% less capital if I'm regulated in the US. It's no exaggeration, I'm not overdoing. 20 to 30% less capital. Now someone could say, well, Andreas, it's no problem because if you need more capital, then you're super safe, you're super regulated. This is true, maybe. The other side of the medal is the following. My company is listed on the stock exchange in Vienna. If I'm sitting in New York, if I'm sitting in Washington, and if I talk with potential investors, he or she wants to understand, understand three things from me. He or she wants to understand what is the strategy of my company? Item one. Item two, she or he wants to understand what KPIs do I have, what kind of earnings, what kind of dividends do I propose? And then at the end of the day, if they understand how much capital I have on my balance sheet, which I cannot bring to work, which I cannot deploy, they will not invest into my company. They will invest into an Asian or a US-based company. And why I say this is because if you don't allow us to push as engine, a strong engine, Europe's overall economic performance, what we can do, just have in mind, 11 trillion of euros are waiting to be invested properly. If you don't allow us to do, you're doing really tremendous harm, not only to the overall 
competitiveness of Europe, not only to the relevance of Europe's economic power, but you do harm to the wealth of European citizens, right? So please forgive me if I was very blunt and open on this early Wednesday morning, but I wanted to talk with you about those three items, about customers, about investments, and about the global competitiveness. I'm very happy that with Insurance Europe, we have a very strong platform to discuss about those topics. Insurance Europe always takes, also takes care uh, because it runs the Secretariat of the Global Federation of Insurance Associations about the global dimension of uh, insurance companies, and we're seeking the communication, we're seeking the dialogue with all policymakers, stakeholders, with the OPA, with the Commission, with the Parliament, but I think it's a very critical, a very crucial time in which we are in currently in this June of 2023 as far as the future of our industry is concerned. Having said so, I may thank you for listening to me, for not sleeping in this early morning, and I may hand over the floor to Susan Neely. Thank you so much.